Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. This is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PS5312 by to your knowledge. Okay, in a previous video we started our lecture with the types of endocrine glands. In on a pre in our previous video we discussed the pituitary gland and a thyroid gland in great detail. So if you haven't watched that video, I have given the link in the description. Go ahead, click on that link and watch that video. So uh, in this video we'll start our lecture on adrenal gland which is another set of glands called the adrenal gland is of particular interest to psychologists so i have included two definitions the first one is pair of endocrine glands that are Im involved in the human stress response or you can say two glands on the kidney which are involved in the physical and emotional arousal so basically the location of the adrenal gland is on the top of kidney the adrenal glands are pair of glands that sit atop of the kidney or you can say the adrenal glands or suprarenal gland is located above the kidney so basically its location is again on the top of the kidney adrenal glands can be uh, divided into two parts the adrenal cortex and the uh, adrenal medulla so adrenal cortex is the outer gland and the adrenal medulla is the inner gland so uh, adrenal gland uh, they play an important role in emotional arousal and secrete a variety of hormones important to metabolism so it has a role to play in determining an individual's mood energy level and ability to cope with stress so both the adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla produce hormones that are involved in human stress response so let's start with the adrenal cortex the adrenal cortex secretes corticosteroid and this secretion is regulated by the ACTH of the pituitary so the corticosteroids in, uh, increases uh, resistance to stress by making the liver um, uh, release to, to release the stored glucose and thus energize the body to meet stressful situation. So stressful hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex also interact with immune system, the body's defense against invading viruses or bacteria. And uh, adrenal medulla is uh, basically adrenal medulla plays a key role in the fight or flight response when aroused the sympathetic nervous system stimulates the adrenal medulla and in turn the adrenal medulla uh, stimulates uh, in turn the adrenal medulla produces uh, epinephrine and non-epinephrine uh, sorry norepinephrine which are also known as adrenaline and noradrenaline so this secretion is enabled by the sympathetic nervous system which enables this uh, gland release a mixture of both of these hormones so Apart from their role in stressful situation, epinephrine is crucial to the experience of fear and anxiety and norepinephrine is basically concerned with regulation of blood pressure. So as they circulate through the bloodstream to the heart and other target organs, uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine complement and enhance the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. So these hormones also act as neurotransmitters stimulating activity at the synapses in the sympathetic nervous system so the action of the epinephrine and norepinephrine is a good illustration of the long-lasting effect of the hormones so if you have noticed that it takes a while for you to calm down after a particularly upsetting or stressful experience it is because of lingering effects of epinephrine and norepinephrine in your body so um, when stimulated either by hormones from the pituitary gland or by the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system the adrenal glands secrete three hormones among others that are important in reaction to stress so epinephrine and norepinephrine which are also known as neurotransmitters they stimulate changes to prepare the body to deal with physical demands that require intense body activity including psychological threats or danger even when the danger cannot be dealt physically so the effect of these two hormones 
uh, are quite similar but they can be distinguished in terms of their most potent activity. For example, let's talk about the epinephrine. Epinephrine increases blood pressure by increasing heart rate and blood flow causes the liver to convert and release some supply of stored sugar into the bloodstream and increases the rate at which the body uses energy which is the process known as metabolism, sometimes as much as 100% over normal. Whereas, uh, whereas the norepinephrine also increases blood pressure, but it does this by constricting the diameter of blood vessels in the body's muscles and by reducing the activity of digestive system. So, the adrenal gland also secrete the hormones, a uh, hormone called cortisol, which also act, um, activates the body in terms of stress and plays an important role in the regulation of immunity to diseases. Um, let's look at an example. Let's, uh, let's look at an example of the action of the adrenal gland during stress. So, does giving speech in a public make you tense? Well, most people find speaking to be at least mildly stressful and there was a German scientist whose name was Ulrich Ball Andorf who collected blood and urine from 10 physicians and psychologists at two different times. First was just after they gave an important public speech to their colleagues and uh, at the same time on another day when they were not speaking. So three adrenal hormones, epinephrine, norepinephrine and cortisol were measured in these uh, fluids and there was a dramatic increase in the secretion of adrenal hormones during the speech and increase in heart rate and blood pressure. So the changes in heart rate and blood pressure were caused by the action of epinephrine and non uh, norepinephrine on the heart and blood vessels but also by the direct action of the autonomic nervous system on these organs. Thus, you can say that the autonomic nervous system uh, has two ways of activating the internal organs. First is by directly affecting the organ and the second is by stimulating the adrenal and other, uh, other endocrine glands that then influence the um, organs with the, their hormones. So, one reason it takes so long to feel calm after a stressful event has passed is because of this second uh, route to activating the body. It takes quite a, well f uh, quite a while for the hormone to leave the bloodstream, so their effects are rather long-lasting. So, this was the end of the video. If your concept is clear, you can like the video. If not, you can ask us in the comment section and we will be happy to help you out. Plus, if you're new to this channel, you can subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you will never ever miss any notification. You can also share the link of this channel and video with your family members and friends because sharing is caring. Until then, Allah Hafiz.